Welcome, everybody. Um, today, uh, we're going to look at the, uh, the NIST cybersecurity framework um, and see wh where it is. It's been a few years uh, since it was released. And uh, so uh, the, we're going to just look at who is using it, why are people using it, uh, what are people saying about it. Uh, NIST has just released uh, version 1.1 for comment. Uh, we'll uh, look a little bit at uh, what, what's in that uh, and uh, have some uh, suggestions and some implications of things that have been developments that have been uh, um, going on in the, uh, in the uh, cybersecurity world uh, uh, after the uh, framework has been released. released. I think the slides are working. Okay, excellent. Um, so, in fifth 2014, the first version of the cybersecurity framework was released. Uh, it was developed by NIST, uh, which is the National Institutes of Standards and Technology for Standards and Technology. Um, we did a webinar in November 2014 about the NIST framework, uh, and we were thinking that it was going to become a new standard of due care. Uh, so. In the meantime, the, at that point in time, it was, you know, here's the federal government has come out with this thing uh, based from a, a presidential executive order. Uh, is anybody going to take this seriously? Is it going to have any impact? Or is this just sort of another, you know, federal exercise uh, uh, kind of a deal? And the answer is that it, definitely people are taking it seriously. And as we'll see, it is, it is having impact. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, the uh, <clears throat> version 1.1 has just been released. I think the comment period is, uh, ends in a, in a few days. So, uh, the cybersecurity framework was developed uh, in response to a presidential executive order in February of 2013. Uh, President Obama uh, called for the development of a security framework to reduce cyber risk to critical infrastructure. And he directed uh, NIST to uh, have responsibility for doing that. In the federal government, NIST is the agency responsible for all of the cybersecurity uh, standards and practices and guidelines, standards from the federal point of view. Uh, and uh, there are several uh, uh, reasons uh, cited for doing the framework. Uh, address uh, national and economic security challenges, uh, as uh, we've continued to see uh, there are lots of malware and ransomware and a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, cyber uh, uh, bad actors out there, uh, and uh, they wanted to see, make sure that uh, the critical infrastructure in the United States was resilient uh, so that it could survive uh, and, and uh, fend off uh, you know, some, of these, uh, some of these attacks. Um, it also was to be voluntary the, uh, if the government mandated some kind of cyber program for the private sector, there'd be, you know, the howls would be never ending. Uh, it needed to be collaboratively developed with stakeholders, and there was given a one year deadline for it to be released. Uh, interestingly, also um, at the time, it was a, sort of a new paradigm because it a risk-based approach for managing cybersecurity. Now, NIST has done uh, some work in that area in the past. They have three specific publications uh, uh, listed here uh, which uh, define uh, <clears throat> risk management uh, processes, risk management systems, and also uh, uh, controls uh, at the federal level for cybersecurity. Certainly at the time, if you were a federal agency or, or, uh, or uh, involved in critical infrastructure, uh, you were going to need to use this. Um, and that's been, uh, been, uh, that been the case in, in the time since then. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in February um, 2014, version 1 was released. Uh, there was a mandate that it should be reviewed and updated as necessary. Uh, NIST went through a formal development process. They did an RFI. They held a series of public workshops uh, uh, to uh, comply with the directive that they had to do this in collaboration with stakeholders. Uh, all of these uh, workshops uh, information is publicly available on the uh, on the NIST uh, cybersecurity portal. Um, one uh, part of the directive was that it be based on existing standards, guidelines, and practices. So that is why. Uh, you will see uh, when we, uh, a little bit that 
existing uh, practices. They weren't going to reinvent a more perfect uh, set of cybersecurity practices. There was a lot of work that had been done, and they were they wanted, going to leverage that. So you'll see that work by ISO and COVID and, uh, and the SANS Institute uh, was incorporated into the framework, along with, obviously, the work that the NIST had done in the government. Uh, the original focus was on uh, risk to critical infrastructure, uh, the presidential directive required it to be performance-based and cost-effective. Um, there was nothing. There was no definition of what that was, but but the, obviously that was to make sure that it was practical for somebody to implement, and not something that was just be so onerous that it just you know was was not cost-effective or feasible to do it. The other uh, key thing is they wanted to uh, come in and figure out how to align the cybersecurity uh, policy uh, with the business. And also the technology, because if the uh, a lot of cybersecurity, as we have seen, and some of the cases, is the executives uh, don't really buy into the cybersecurity that much because they look at it as an extra expense of doing business, and until they uh, suffer some kind of embarrassing breach, and then they realize, such as uh, Target did and Sony, that uh, gee, we really need to think about this uh, seriously. Uh, one other um, key point that some, if you look at some of the feedback comments uh, that not, I don't think everybody grasped is that this is a descriptive guidance. It is not prescriptive guidance. So what that means is like uh, standards like ISO and so forth, it tells you what to do, but it doesn't tell you how to do it. So, so the implementation is very flexible and is up to the individual organization to figure out how to apply the framework in their business context. So, as I mentioned, it it is aligns the cybersecurity and business objectives. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how they do that. Uh, it's process oriented. It defines a process that you follow to develop your cybersecurity system. Uh, it is based on uh, on. A set of established security principles, or what they call the informative references. Uh, it acknowledges that there are cultural impacts for implementing cybersecurity. It defines what I, I call uh, capability maturity expectations, uh, although the, uh, the NIST people disavow uh, that there's any uh, implications of capability maturity in the framework, but practically that's really what they're talking about. Uh, it has, as we mentioned, it has a risk-based approach. It also has implications on governance because there's an implicit expectation that that the enterprise risk management process will flange into the cybersecurity risk process and will be sort of more of an integrated whole than, than siloed. Uh, it focuses on risk assessment and risk management. Uh, and as I mentioned, it's required by federal agencies, contractors, and critical infrastructure owners regulated by the federal government. There are three components in the version one in, 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 the, in the cyber framework, and they're continued in the version 1.1. What for, which is where you list the various uh, uh, cybersecurity needs, the activities, uh, what they call outcomes. Uh, and uh, and uh, references. So these are all of these the existing standards and practices. Uh, then they have what they call the tiers, and this is sort of a very interesting uh, thing, um, where an organization gets to decide how rigorous and sophisticated it's going to be in taking action on several on any of these different cybersecurity activities that they want to do. So do they want to be really rigorous or do they want to just be sort of okay? Uh, they can figure that out based on their business needs. And then also they can they have this concept of a profile where it's just where you define or list all your current cybersecurity activities and then you can have that specifically a current profile. And how, and then you you show show how rigorous you want to be in each of these 